All right, good morning, good morning everybody. It's Michael again with the latest supply and demand market report. I hope you've all been well and trading well. Um, I thought I'd do a, our usual video today. I didn't do a video last week because I didn't really find much um, to interest me in the markets. Um, and even now there isn't still that much, but I, I didn't want to leave it too long. Um, thank you to all of you who've been in touch and for those of you who've shown your interest and, and got the video course i hope you're you're learning tons um so today we're just going to go through the weekly charts as we do um i've got a bunch of markets here that we're going to look at as usual the same old same old um but if there are any markets you wanted me to look at please just let me know um the details are the same it's storehouse analytics at gmail.com Okay, so let's get to it. We'll start with, as always, um, the US dollar. Um, and we can see that we're having significant events happening, which is one of the reasons I wanted to, to get on here and do a video. You will recall we were looking at these type of levels the last time we were together. Since then, there's been a little bit of another level formed and we are breaking out to new highs, as you will see the highs from 2017 we've closed above those on a significant time frame the weekly what we now need is for it to start living above this level and staying above it you know entire trading periods being spent above it we are yet to see that but we are bullish if we start to pull back there are levels of demand that are below us if we look above us to the left i'm just going to scrunch up so there are levels in here. I believe they are better seen just quickly jumping to the monthly. Yes, I will just put that one in. So that's the monthly level. We can always go down. Let me get the right tool. We can always go down into the weekly and start looking into that area. You'll see we're not that far away from it. And the weekly levels are lower down into this range. So let's go back to the weekly and scrunch it up again. So I'll just blow that up real quick and you can see I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit and start putting it from here, from this this candle here. I mean, really, you could just take it from here, to be honest. Um, but I'll, I'll be looking the way that I, I trade. I will be looking in that general area anyway. When prices get there, it's not that I'm going to be setting it, you know, automatically to to go short there. But anyone who is long, we're getting close to areas where um, one would like to take profit in the, in the dollar and, and start looking for opportunities um, to go short, which may or may not arise, as, as you know. So we'll see what happens when prices get up here. Um, looking at the euro, which will be the opposite again as the euro, as the dollar rather is rising into those supply levels and forming demand in the euro we can see that we have supply levels above us that have been formed levels on top of levels this one is not so great the wick is a bit larger than i would normally like um, but it's the origin of the entire move to the downside and if we go and look below us in terms of demand you're going to be looking in this range and there are levels there there are levels there to look at. Um, I think we've traded through this level. Let's just have a quick look. Yeah, we have, as you can see, we've traded through it. We're back down at it now. Prices are still stalling, but it's not an area that we would be looking to use. So we can, we can always take that off, but it's definitely not in, not quite there for this time frame. the way we're trading um, for us to be initiating new short positions no way um, we're looking for rallies to go short and if one is already short one is looking for buying opportunities lower down at these levels um, down in here okay so that's the dollar and the euro real quick the pound is forming supply zone still it still continues to go down it is at a not that great a level of demand but demand nonetheless potentially could cause a bounce as usual we would be going down to smaller time frames to try to catch the bounce now please remember what i always say to you on this channel it's it's a lower probability trade to be looking for 
short positions down into this area and you don't necessarily want to be just looking into this level here and looking for demand zones to to buy for a rally up unless of course you're just looking for a small bounce on a very small intraday type of time frame if you're looking for this to go weekly to weekly probably best to wait on the daily um, at the lowest maybe a four hour to look for a, a stabilization of price and then a change in trend for you to then consider um, going long to try to get it back up into the opposing weekly level where you really want to be going short um, so that's those are the levels in the pound and if we do break this level we're coming where the next potential area is down into these lows there isn't anything on this broker um, for to, to the left there probably will be on on other brokers that have more data but not on this one so these lows here are the you know next level if we break break this demand okay all right new zealand us dollar also continuing to go down we've talked about that level in previous videos and it has just been a monster move we are beginning to come down into areas where you know you're probably going to be seeing people trying to pick a bottom as it's coming into this area we will probably be looking for a bit of a move a bigger move to see if this this area here let me just put a point an arrow to it this area here becomes a drop base drop supply for now it's nothing um, it's still it's still in the process of being formed if it is formed um, so there isn't too much to do on this time frame it might be worth watching it on a on a daily as it keeps coming down to see as again if it stabilizes um, and starts forming um, demand zones uh, but to initiate new shorts here now definitely not okay moving swiftly on to the Aussie similar picture that one just fell short of the supply up into here and it's just continued down we do not have demand on significant demand anyway until around here we have this level that continues to hold price it's gone one two three four at least now this is the fifth time and as one would expect it's gone deeper in so we could potentially see a rally from here um, it's it would have shaken out a lot of stops below below the lows in in this area yeah that's a big big arrow um, let me use a thinner one just to make sure you understand what I mean so all this all the potential stops in this sort of area that were below these lows that formed made a new high came back to it bounced bounced tried to make a new high again and then it's taken all of it out so there will be stops that it would have been taken out so you might get a sort of short squeeze to try to take it back up into levels but then you are likely to come up against sellers let's take a look on the daily mm, probably around here you might come up against significant selling if we do start to break down and break down through the weekly demand zone then I would be interested in in this area um, in fact right now I would be interested in that area as, as of now um, just to see what happens when prices do get up here this would be an area of interest in that one also this one obviously the higher it is the better um, but this one is is not bad at all either okay um, let's go to the indices now we'll go back to the weekly We'll go to the indices so we've continued to see the stock market struggle it's down into some areas on the s p 500 the u.s stock market i should say where one would expect maybe a bit of a bounce and we we did see that rally on friday a lot of stocks up you know 10 15 18 20 percent um, but ultimately we are still in a really difficult market if you are long um, so you're looking at momentum still being to the downside the majority of stocks are still um, going down uh, apart from the bounce on friday so watching this area there aren't any quality supply zones other than the top here so watching for a rally that would still be the area that i would be significantly interested in if i look on the daily nothing nothing jumps out immediately so I'm gonna leave my supply up here new supply may form um, but for now 
it's it's what it is looking for a bounce trade trading the corrective trade off of the daily again <clears throat> I would want to see prices start trading above that sort of area um, and forming demand zones before I would be interested in, in going along to try and get it back up into into the weekly supply okay it'll be a similar picture for the Nasdaq um, that one doesn't have that much demand there might be some demand down in the 9850 area but for now it's just got lower highs and lower lows not seeing any quality supply just yet intraday there's a ton of levels you can play back and forth but for this for this market the supply that one would be interested depending on how you draw it if you drew it um, from the lows you could take that one as one level you could take that one as all the way all the top there as another level then you could argue that that level has been hit twice and held um, so that's what we're looking at on the Nasdaq there may be an opportunity to bounce here there is a little bit of demand into this level but it's ultimately an area that prices stayed for a very long time so not not the greatest okay so nothing to really to do right now in in the Nasdaq um, for me the way that the way that I trade of course um, and looking at the Australian stock market you can see the highs that were put in we've got demand still holding into that area um, just hold use the whole level so you've got prices tested there once twice it's come back the third time there is supply above now um, it's still in a range ultimately but this is the area of the top of the range uh, I've joined two levels together there level on top of level the rally base and the drop and the drop base drop so we'll see if prices do make it back up there okay let's go to Japan and Japan has continued to work off of that weekly we've talked about in previous videos there isn't that much demand until you start getting down into these areas so this market could potentially base between this level that took out as we said this supply um, that we pointed out in the last video a couple of weeks ago it took out that supply and you can see that the market is trying to use that level as the demand it rallied strong it came into supply so it's now stuck in between these two levels so trading this kind of market is possible if you're looking at short-term moves if you're looking for a bigger move um, maybe not so much you want to be waiting for prices to start breaking down and you shorting um, rallies okay um, let's go to Germany and Germany continues to trade off of the weekly supply that we've pointed out it's a big big demand zone not ideal we've got another one just below and that's again where we're stuck in between these two levels um, it's not that directional but for intraday trading this is just about enough more than enough room um, the closer you get up into these levels the short the more short you want to be the closer you get down into this demand the, the more long you want to be um, it's not very directional right now because um, you're kind of stuck in the middle which is never a good thing being stuck in the middle um, okay and the UK market it's it's still one of the sorts of stronger ones holding up there and you can see the highs put in there that it's still holding it's got some demand into this level here um, that level there is what is really holding it um, it's this this one will be like the bottom of the range that's formed we remember we talked about this supply in, in the previous video and that supply so far is what is holding prices um, to the downside so again for the for the non US markets kind of stuck in the range for the US markets not great supply so the indices may not be the place to be living <laughs> over the next week or so um, until we see clearer levels um, form as, as the market gives us more information um, okay let's go to the energy complex and we'll look at nat gas first obviously with the geopolitical situation that's been going on Nasdaq and uh, the nat gas continues to to be strong it's holding this sort of it's not even a demand zone it's 
it's an area of congestion right in here that prices rallied from not that strongly but it's come back to it and that's where people have used to to try to buy it to continue it back up i think there is a little bit of chasing going on um for people who've missed out on on most of this rally so that is at least my explanation to myself why maybe this kind of zone which is not really that well formed is is being used so basically any any sort of drop in price is being bought up suggesting the urgency to to want to get in long in in this market for me i'd rather it still come down into these into these any one of these two levels as we've talked about before that would be a nice pullback that we can then look to hold on for for longer but it's still near its 52 week highs showing its strength 52 week lows are still way down there so we're nowhere near the 52 week lows obviously so up up and away and crude crude also refusing to break down still got that little demand level and oh let me just one more thing sorry about the nasdaq i believe we had a supply level in the nasdaq that we were looking at um that level there that it's it's traded through it um, but we still have another little one just above where it's it's come to so those that will be the opposite level to to consider maybe if you're long to look for taking some off the table ultimately up in here is where the supply um, really is up in there but as this market keeps going up it's these supply zones that will be looking to cause the pullbacks so that's where i would um, be looking to peel some off the table just quickly going back to crude um crude similar picture crude has made it uh, obviously close to its its own supply levels let me just blow that area up there might be a gap in there no it's just the wick to wick okay so depending on how you want to draw it there's nothing wrong with drawing it like that if you wanted to tighten it up you could tighten it up to there or even more over there near the origin of the drop so it's it is nearing supply it's not quite there and it is holding above all you see all of this congestion all of that area there it's holding above previous areas that had held prices down it has traded through it um, and it's just holding there which suggests strength so it's correcting in in time rather than um, as much as in price um, so for now still basing if you look at it on the daily you'll see you know it's just it's just sideways isn't it it's just a box um, so trading back and forth on the daily if you're intraday trading you're looking at these two levels up there and you've got your levels of demand down into this area if you're if you're trading shorter term okay we're looking at the weekly charts i keep going to the daily i can't help myself <laughs> but I'm going to try and stick to the weekly charts. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Let me take all of these off. Yeah, for crude, again, that level there. And the supply is up there. Okay. Um, metals. Gold. Not being the greatest market. It tried to go. It did try back in March didn't quite make it and it's coming back down into the range has been this area has witnessed a lot of trading um, I, I I would not be surprised if prices traded through it and tried to come back into the lows from 2021 so we'll see how how that goes for now there isn't much to say about it still need to see if this area forms some um, supply it's not fully formed yet but it's an area to keep an eye on. If we drop a little bit more and, and stay away from this level a little bit longer, then we might be looking at a drop base drop into this area. I, for me, would like it to get below these lows and that will give me more, more evidence that selling has definitely taken over. For now, we're in a box. We're in that range. That's all that we're, that's all that's happened, okay? Um, going to silver, silver is, is much um, weaker um, than gold, obviously, as you can see. There is supply above us, which prices were too weak to get to. We've taken out this demand level, 
which did hold price up for a little bit and then crashed right through it. Again, we're looking to form new supply in this area, not fully formed just like the one in gold we just talked about, but it's an area to watch. It was the pause before we went below all of these lows in here. So it's definitely an area to watch and the nearest sort of area you might want to look at if in terms of buying is down in there. So there's room to go if we do form up in this supply and we can watch for a rally back into that area if we do form it um, and then maybe aim for this this whole area down in here for a target. Okay, and finally we'll look at corn. What can I tell you? Corn continues to go with not that much opportunity, not that much of a pullback on this time frame. Um, there are buyers who are trying to use these areas to, to get in long. It's not moving that much um, anymore. It's definitely slowing down. You can see that even just from the size of the of the candles of the trading periods that it's, it's not moving very fast, very quick. Um, but for now, there isn't that much to do just like every week. Um, so far we need it to to move one way or the other if we look at the daily just real quick um, yeah nothing nothing jumps out I mean that was the last trade in it but that's gone now it's I'm not interested in all this goobly gook all, all of this area is the technical term is goobly gook <laughs> for it um, so that's, that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope the video has not been too long. And thank you for listening and sharing. And I'm being told I need to remind people to like and subscribe. Like the video. Um, subscribe. Get the algorithms to, to pick it up. So please like the video and, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I look forward to talking to you all again next week. Take care, everybody. Trade well and trade safe.